Hello and welcome to another week of reflection. Uh, this week we are focusing on uh, the evangelist Luke, who is the gospel writer and also um, an amazing apostle as well. And we'll find out a little bit more about him shortly. But first, a reading from Luke's gospel, chapter 10. After this, the Lord appointed 70 others and sent them on ahead of him in pairs to every town and place where he himself intended to go. He said to them, The harvest is plentiful, but the labourers are few. Therefore, ask the Lord of the harvest to send out labourers into his harvest. Go on your way. See, I am sending you out like lambs in the midst of wolves. Carry no purse, no bag, no sandals. Greet no one on the road. Whatever house you enter, first say, peace to this house. And if anyone is there who shares in peace, your peace will rest on that person. But if not, it will return to you. Remain in the same house, eating and drinking, whatever they provide, for the labourer deserves to be paid. Do not move about from house to house. Whenever you enter a town and its people welcome you, eat what is set before you. Cure the sick who are there and say to them, the kingdom of God has come near to you. This is the word of the Lord. I wonder how much you know about saints. For example, do you know that the patron saint of animals is St Francis of Assisi? Or the patron saint of lost things is St Anthony? The patron saint of music is St Cecilia? Or oh, one of my favourites, the patron saint of children, is Saint Nicholas. The 18th of October is the day traditionally kept to remember Saint Luke the Evangelist. The title Evangelist comes from the word Evangel, which means the Gospel. It's a title given to Saint Luke as the author of one of the four of the Gospels. However, it's sometimes easy to forget that he didn't just write the Gospel of Luke, he was also the author of the Acts of the Apostles. And although I've not actually counted the words myself, maybe that could be a task over half term, I understand that as the author of Luke and Acts, this makes St Luke the biggest single contributor to the collection of writings we call the New Testament, even more than St Paul. Luke was also a physician, a doctor, and is the patron saint of doctors as you might expect. However, did you know Luke is also the patron saint of painters and artists and he's often depicted as a painter with brushes and a palette and is even said to have painted the first icon of Mary. Whether or not this is actually true, it is certainly true that Luke displays an artistic eye in his gospel as he beautifully depicts scenes from the life of Jesus and scenes and descriptions that we don't see anywhere else in the Bible. So many great paintings have taken their inspiration from Luke's description, for example, of the birth of Jesus, the shepherds coming into the stable, the vision of the angels or the visit of the Magi. Pope John Paul I apparently liked to write letters to different people he would never be able to have contact with. And he wrote such a letter to St Luke. When I read it on the internet earlier this week, I thought it was really beautiful and what a great idea. He wrote, Dear St Luke, I've always been fond of you because you're a man of great sweetness, filled with the spirit of conciliation. In your gospel, you stress that Christ is infinitely good, that sinners are the object of a special love on God's part, and that Jesus almost ostentatiously made the acquaintance of those who did not enjoy any consideration in the world. You are the only one who gives us the story of Christ's nativity and his childhood, which we hear read at Christmas, and it always gives renewed emotion. One little phrase of yours in particular captures my attention, wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. A beautiful image of something that we've become so familiar with in our Christmas story. Luke writes so beautiful. 
with details we don't always see in other Gospels. He's also the only Gentile author, and this comes through with some of the parables he includes, for example like the Good Samaritan, that aren't found elsewhere. But ultimately, he's writing for those on the edge. The first to the manger, that first Christmas, were not the wealthy wise men. No, they wouldn't show up for years. Rather, on the night of Jesus' birth, the angels appeared to the shepherds. Dirty, stinky, smelly shepherds. Totally untrustworthy, the lowest of the low in society. Shepherding was a disrespectful profession and very low esteemed. Yet that's who God had the angels tell and the shepherds were the first visitors. What about the visit to the tomb? Who were the first to discover the resurrection on Easter morning? It wasn't religious scholars or government officials, no Pharisees or Roman emperors. Rather, it was the women. In that day, women were lowly esteemed to the point where their testimony was not admissible in court. And yet, again, it was God who chose them to be the first to discover the miracle of the resurrection, to proclaim the, the truth afresh that Jesus is alive. Ruth Gillett in Reflective Worship summed up St Luke as follows. Reading Luke's Gospel, we gain the impression that he was someone who loved the poor, wanted the kingdom to be open to all, no exceptions, and respected women. What a wonderful summary, portraying a picture of a truly genuine and godly man. And I think he portrays what Jesus calls us to do as a church in the 21st century. The Gospel reading that we've just had is a great teaching aid for pioneers and missionaries. Something that we were given when we trained to be missionaries a few years ago. There is a huge task that Jesus wants his team to undertake. So what does he say? The harvest is plentiful, but the labourers are few. Hmm, if Jesus was on this earth now, I don't think he'd be getting a job in advertising anytime soon. Best stick to carpentry. He's not really selling it very well, is he? The harvest is plentiful. There's a big job to do, but there's not many people to do it. Sounds like hard work. And if that wasn't bad enough, he compounds the problem even further. Go on your way. I am sending you out like lambs into the midst of wolves. Carry no purse, no bag, no sandals. The task doesn't sound very inviting, does it? It's too big for the team. It's dangerous and you can't even take any creature comforts with you. However... When we went to Indonesia as teachers and missionaries, this spoke volumes to us. We knew it was going to be tough. We knew we couldn't do it alone. We needed a team and we knew we weren't to take anything with us. So we sold our house, our car and most of our belongings. It was so tough that the call was even stronger. And God honoured that. Even 15 years later, we still have people we call friends in Indonesia. The school we helped to start is going strong and God continues to be faithful. God too called Luke to use his skills. His skills as a physician, but ultimately to be a missionary, to go out and bring in the harvest. And he calls us to do the same, using whatever skills and gifts we have. Not alone, but with others, together declaring the good news. Just this week, I had the privilege of assisting at a funeral of a dearly beloved friend. She had such a gift of hospitality that she brought so many people to the church, just showing Jesus' love by her gift of hospitality, amongst many other things. Our gifts don't need to be medical or academic, but they can be practical. Every single gift is needed to welcome in the kingdom of God. Luke had a holistic view of life, 
and wanted to combine his skills as a doctor, but also was very committed in curing souls too. The harvest is plentiful. We sing when we can about harvest, but do we acknowledge what it really means? If the harvest doesn't get brought in, it goes to waste. Jesus is calling each one of us to bring in the harvest for him. People are desperately searching for something and Jesus is asking us to bring them in. He doesn't want anybody to miss out on the opportunity of knowing him. The kingdom of God has come near to you. How can we share that with those we meet this week? Maybe we can take a moment to think about how our thoughts, our words and our actions are going to show the light of Jesus to others this week. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we thank you so much for those disciples and apostles who have gone before us. We thank you for the dedication of St Luke. Thank you for the skills you blessed him with. Thank you for his commitment to go out and to bring in that harvest wherever it took him in the world. We thank you that you are forever faithful to us. Thank you that we can trust you and depend on you for everything. And we don't need that extra baggage with us. We just need you. We pray that you will continue to help us show your light to those we meet this week in the things that we say and the things we do and Lord we do pray for that harvest to fruit to blossom to overflow and we pray also that there will be plenty of labourers to bring that harvest home in Jesus name we pray Amen. I do pray that whatever this week holds, there will be times of blessing for you. And please, 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 wherever you are watching this, do keep safe. God bless.